I love to experiment with procedural setups in Blender and from time to time create some looping video out of my discoveries. This motion graphics piece was pretty successful on Twitter when I first published it, so I thought it's about time to share its inner workings with you. It doesn't have a name, just creative coding, but using geometry nodes instead. It's fully procedural. You can change the bolts number, outer circle points and connecting lines number, inner ball traveling circle radius or the outer circle radius for that matter. It will still work the same. There might be other ways to build this, but I'm sure this is the most efficient one. Follow along. You might learn something new, even if you are a seasoned geometry nodes user. Add a mesh line. Keep just three points for now. Leave the Z offset value to its default as we build this. It will help us visualize the setup better. You can always zero it out in the end. Instantiate a mesh circle on the line points. Leave the radius value at the default. Realize the instances. Rotate the 3D view around but keep checking the setup from the top. Create a new branch, adding a Scale Elements node. Scale the edges uniformly down to zero. The points of this branch will represent the rotating spheres inside the outer perimeter. Use a Mesh to Points node to visualize them. Currently the points are positioned in the center of the outer circles. Let's move them around an inner circle. Add a Set Position node. We will drive the position of these points based on the index number of each mesh island. Keep in mind that although we only see three points, they are in fact three mesh circles. Let's divide the mesh island index by the mesh island count. This will normalize the point indices value in a range from 0 to 1. To map this range to a full circle, multiplied by 2 times pi. Connect the result to a sign math node, duplicate it and change the function to cosine. Feed them both to a combined xyz vector and use this vector to drive the offset of the set position node. To control the radius of the inner circle, scale the vector. Now the points are aligned around a circle. To animate them, insert an Add node and type this little bit of code. Hashtag frame divided by 25, our frames per second, this will return time in seconds, divided by 15 seconds in this case. Our points will make a full circle in 15 seconds. To draw a line that connects the points of the inner circles with their counterparts on the outer ones, we will use an extrude node. Set it in vertices mode. Extrude accepts a direction vector called offset as well as a scalar input called offset scale. To calculate the direction, we need the position vectors on the points of both inner and outer circles. Because they are branches of the same geometry, they share the same index number. Use a sample index node based on the index number to get the position of the outer circles. Subtracting the position vectors of our current working points from the sampled position vectors of the outer circles returns the desired direction vectors for the extrude node. Append a length node to the subtraction result and feed the value to the offset scale input. We're not done yet. Insert a map range node to shorten the lines based on the distance between the circles. Adjust the input range from 1.1 to 0.95. Leave the output range untouched. Hit play and watch the lines leap towards their target as soon as they appear in range. This setup is fully procedural. You can change other parameters and experiment with the results. 
For example, you can at any time increase or decrease the number of inner points and our setup will still work as meant. Now add a merge distance node to remove any overlapping points. Next step is to attach small circles at the end of our lines. Add an instance on points to our lines and use another mesh circle as an instance geometry. Leave the radius to 1. We will again drive the scale of the instances with the length of the lines. Simply adding a map range node to the vector length won't work in this case. The instances don't have any notion of vector length. This info simply won't get through the points down to the instances. That's why we use a capture attribute node before the extrude takes place to store this info and propagate it through the points down to the instances. Now we can range map this value and drive the instances scale with it. To see both lines and circlets, join both geometry branches with a geometry to instance node. We want the circlet's radii to be affected only when the connecting lines are at their shortest range, let's say 0.5 to 0.6 units. For this range we want the radii to go from 0.05 to 0.01. You can play with your values and find what works best for you. We still miss one component the encircling rings for all our outer edges. Let's add them now. Go back to the first outline circle mesh, branch another instance on points node, and use yet another mesh circle as the geometry to instance. Lower the vertices number to 16 and choose a radius large enough to keep our other animated circlets inside. I'm going with 0 0.09. As a last step, you can instance a sphere geometry on the rotating points and have them roll around. I'm keeping this video short and leave it here. If you want to render lines, just convert them to curves and sweep a circle profile along them. I'm sure you all learned something new from this video. As I said, you can tweak settings and get different results. This is the beauty of proceduralism. Ask questions in the comment section and if you like the video, share the knowledge.